In an interview with the Syrian Al Akhbariya TV stresses that Syria is being exposed to a real war and everyone who uses weapons against citizens is a terrorist. Al Jafari stresses that Syria supports all efforts to put an end to all forms of sexual abuse and punishing the terrorist perpetrators. against any foreign intervention in Syria, pointing out that this could lead to an explosion in the Middle East. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. This is Yerado Krikorian with the news in English. In an interview with the Syrian Al Ikhbariya channel, President Al Assad stressed that Independence Day marks the past of pride and the present of dignity. The President added that the situation in Syria now is better than it was at the beginning of the crisis. His Excellency stressed that the Syrians are a great people and should not be feared for. We derive our optimism, the President pointed out, from our citizens, particularly the strong families of martyrs, asserting that there is no option before us except victory. President al-Assad said, what is happening in Syria is war in every sense of the word, and the priority for the government is the humanitarian situation. In reply to a question, President al-Assad said, Erdogan has failed in what is called the zero problem policy that has turned into a zero policy, zero credibility and zero ethics. And the terrorists in Syria, the president said, thousands of armed men and terrorists with their weapons and ammunition come into the country from Jordan. And the so-called opposition, the president affirmed that the opposition cannot be patriotic unless it is settled inside the homeland. Syria's permanent representative to the UN, Dr. Bashar al-Jafari, has stressed that Syria supports all efforts exerted to put an end to all forms of sexual violence during armed conflict and punishing the perpetrators, adding that Syria wishes to cooperate with the UN to uncover the reality of the situation in Syria far from politicization. Delivering Syria's word at the opening session of the UN Security Council dedicated to the discussion of the report of the UN Secretary General on sexual violence in cases of conflict, Dr. Al-Jafari also called for caution and objectivity in approaching what he described this dangerous humanitarian issue. He added that the Secretary General's representative pointed out in her report in which she dedicated seven paragraphs to talk about claims concerning Syria that she depended in her report on the International Fact-Finding Committee's report of 2012-2013. He stressed that the work of this committee has not been professional from the beginning and that it was politicized as it rejected hundreds of documents provided by Syria on the crimes of the armed terrorist groups. Al Jafari noted that the committee, which has so far not visited Syria, depended on unofficial reports prepared by opposition sides and enemy information sources. Dr. Al Jafari pointed out that the Secretary General's representative ignored her statement issued on February 15, 2013, under the title Syria Release Kidnapped Women and Children and Protect Them from Sexual Violence, in which she documented kidnapping a bus with at least 40 civilians, most of them women and children, by the armed terrorist groups southwest west of Syria. Dr. Al Jafari added that Syria is looking forward to the visit of the Secretary General's representative, considering it as marking the best way for cooperation and reaching correct information on the sexual violence practiced by the armed terrorist groups against the Syrian people.
For his part, Russia's UN permanent representative Vitaly Chorkin stressed that the report presented by the UN special representative on sexual abuse before the Security Council ignores the crimes committed by the armed terrorist groups in Syria, despite many assertions which have indicated otherwise. Chorkin called on the UN committee to maintain objectivity and rely on credible and verifiable information. Iranian Minister of Defense Brigadier Ahmed Wahidi has said that foreign intervention in Syria would be like an explosion in the Middle East that would hit all the states supporting terrorism, hegemony and the Zionist entity. In a statement to the press today, at the conclusion of the military parade ceremony held on the occasion of the Iranian Army Day, Wahidi referred to those sides that support terrorism, saying, we believe they are too rational to interfere militarily, although they send terrorist groups in an unofficial way. On Israeli and Western threats to Iran, the Iranian Foreign Minister said Iran will respond faster than they expect to any aggression against it by the Israeli entity. Jordanian government affirmed the necessity of finding a political solution to the crisis in Syria. The spokesman of the Jordanian government, the Minister of State for Media, Political and Parliamentary Affairs, Mohammed Al Mumani declared that the Jordanian government is studying the political and security repercussions of the Syrian crisis. The minister also declared that sending new American forces to Jordan was within the usual cooperation between the Jordanian armed forces and the American forces, pointing out that the ongoing communication discusses sending 200 American soldiers according to the cooperation and coordination, while Washington has affirmed that sending 200 soldiers was related to the situation in Syria. Damascus countryside, army units inflicted heavy losses on terrorists in an operation which targeted their gatherings in Jobar and as Sultania farms in eastern Al Ghouta. Army engineering units dismantled three explosive charges weighing between 50 and 70 kilograms near Maysaloon crossing. Our army units killed a number of terrorists who were attacking public properties in Jobar and killed dozens of them. Our army units also conducted a qualitative operation in the farms of Marj Sultan during during which they destroyed a warehouse for ammunition and killed a number of terrorists, including Hussam Arbash, a leader of an armed group. An official source confirmed today that the army units fully controlled Abel Town in Homs countryside. Units of our armed forces inflicted painful blows upon terrorist gatherings, inflicting heavy losses upon them in Homs Governorate and its countryside. A unit of our armed forces chased a terrorist group between villages of Tal Shannan and Al Shtaih, killing and wounding a number of its members and arresting others. Weapons in the terrorist possession were seized, including RPG launcher, PKC machine gun, automatic rifle, and a variety of ammunition. Another arm unit killed and wounded a number of terrorists who were intimidating the citizens and cutting off the roads and the outskirts of Jabal Jandali in Homs. In a successful operation, the arm units killed and wounded a number of terrorists in Al Kahdaliye. Leader of a terrorist group called Hazar Uhuri Zada was among the dead, according to a source at the governorate. In Idlib, units of our valiant armed forces have targeted terrorist gatherings, inflicting direct injuries upon them in several areas. A military source told Sana that the units of our valiant forces targeted gatherings for terrorists in ten sites, inflicting heavy losses upon them. Another armed forces unit targeted terrorist dens on Al Janudia Road in Jusr Shughur, killing and wounding a number of them. A military source said that terrorists Muhammad Hasno, Anwar Brimo, Shadi Brimo, and Muhammad Saleh were identified among the dead. 
Units of armed forces destroyed terrorist gatherings with all terrorists and weapons inside them in Al Mraa and Al Husseiniya villages in their resort countryside. According to a source at the province, terrorist Muhammad Hussein Al Faraj from the so called Umar ibn Al Khattab battalion, Abd Al Salam Fayyad Al Salami, and Ismail Muhammad Al Jamal were among the dead. Khalaf is a citizen from Arraqqa suburbs who works in agriculture and ranching. He was interviewed by the news correspondent during the Syrian army coverage. He wanted to recount events in an honest way. His heart was full of hatred for the terrorists who had come from abroad, from Libya, Saudi Arabia and even from Belgium and started carrying out acts of killing and sabotage, demanding ransoms from citizens. The message of Arraqqa inhabitants was transmitted by the Syrian TV at the news center in the city. I insist that you came with me to show you the real attitude of the people in al tabaqa and al raqqa The Syrian people are kind-hearted and they will never destroy their own country. Now we are heading to Eid village on the highway which was liberated by the Syrian Arab army without whom we couldn't go and move around because of gunmen who came from Jordan, Libya and Saudi Arabia. We have been living in peace until the terrorists came and kicked us out of our homes and forced us even to pay ransoms to them. The situation was safe and calm before the arrival of the armed terrorist gangs who destroyed houses and caused the dis displacement of the civilians. The Syrian Arab army came to protect us from terrorists who are of Libyan and Tunisian nationalities. In Beirut, the families of the Lebanese kidnapped by the terrorist groups in Syria stormed the offices of the Turkish Airlines. They carried out a sit-in demanding the release of the nine kidnapped people who have been kidnapped by the terrorist groups since 11 months. They also prevented the Turkish and Lebanese employees from entering the Turkish Airlines offices, threatening them by escalating their sit-in. Meanwhile, the families carried out two days ago a sit-in in front of the Turkish embassy in Beirut, and last Sunday they stormed Beirut port, preventing the employees from getting the merchandises from Turkish trucks and demanding the Turkish goods province. With this, we end our news for today. Thank you for watching. For more details about Syria and the region and to view this bulletin again, you can always visit our website in English, syriaonline.sy. Now to latest business and market news with Vani Gunj. against any foreign intervention in Syria, pointing out that this could lead to an explosion in the Middle East. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. This is Yerado Krikorian with the news in English. In an interview with the Syrian Al Ikhbariya channel, President Al Assad stressed that Independence Day marks the past of pride and the present of dignity. The President added, This is a terrorist. Al Jafari stresses that Syria supports all efforts to put an end to all forms of sexual abuse and punishing the terrorist perpetrators. In an interview with the Syrian Al Ikhbariya TV stresses that Syria is being exposed to a real war and everyone who uses weapons against citizens.